All right, next up, 335 North John Street discussion. Reggie? Mr. Reggie Turner? Yeah, we could pass it around, it's fine, yeah. Floor is mine? Yes, sir. I'd like to start with a statement uh, from the community. We find ourselves here today on a grassroots effort to preserve and restore the rich history of the Jonathan Street community, starting with an effort to save 335 North Jonathan Street. First, I believe it's important to address how we got here. The ill repair that the Jonathan Street community has fell upon cannot be attributed to one person or organization. It is simply a community failure. More so than condemnation, I am here to bring a message of hope that we can collectively preserve this historic black community and reap the benefits of celebrating its rich history. However, the neglect of the Jonathan Street community by the city of Hagerstown must be discussed and rectified. More than 30 years ago, the city through ordinance named three historic districts and in 1992, the city named a fourth historic district, all while the Jonathan Street community was excluded from the process. Then in 1993, a local historian nominated the city of Hagerstown to the National Register of Historic Places. In that application, no Jonathan Street landmarks were identified in the process. And the mention of the Jonathan Street community was only a throwaway paragraph of incorrect history. Finally, in 2002, the city, through the Department of Planning and Economic Development, had a group from Cambridge, Maryland, conduct the Jonathan Street Preservation Study. Through that study, there were six recommendations given to the city to partner with the community based on their, their findings. Those were Nominate Jonathan Street Historic District to the National Register of Historic Places. Two, nominate Jonathan Street and appropriate sites in Hagerstown to the National Park Service's Gateway to Freedom Program, which commemorates sites associated with the Underground Railroad. Three, develop an ongoing educational program of heritage of the Jonathan Street and the African American community in Hagerstown. Four, Support efforts to provide local information and history for an annual Black History Month celebration. Five, encourage the preservation of the Dolman Collection of African American History. And six, establish Jonathan Street as a municipal historic district or a conservation district. And we sit here 17 years later and none of these recommendations have been adequately accomplished. Recently at a community meeting, a member of this council asked, who do I think I am? I am Reggie Turner, Washington County's first representative in the 50-year history of the Maryland Commission on African American History and Culture, appointed by Governor Larry Hogan and confirmed in the Maryland State Senate. And my task for this community is simple. It consists of discovering, documenting, preserving, collecting, and promoting Maryland's African American heritage. So as, we begin, so as we begin to discuss plans for 335 North Jonathan Street, 
let's acknowledge that after 30 years of exclusion and disinvestment from the city's historic preservation and revitalization efforts, this body has given us only three weeks to formulate a plan. Jonathan Street community who contacted me last week was on this very council when that vote was taken. So to say that we made this decision three days and gave you guys three days notice on it just isn't true. How about 10 years? How about neighborhood first? Neighborhood first was never notified about it. And they're not here to represent, but I am here. I'm, I'm just correcting the, the... I'm just correcting you, Lewis. No, 10 Ron. years ago the decision was made. Are you at the table? You want to come to the table? No, if this is going to be what we no, we're not going to let that do. No, we're not going to do that. What we're but doing I'm right going to allow now. him to have a moment to be able to... I can't tell you, I can't tell you why the neighborhood's first group was not notified that 335 was going to be demolished. I can only tell you that by court order, we're allowed to do it and the call from the community had been to help get rid of neglected, falling down buildings, and help to establish some kind of a, a, of a community that can, and it's not just in the Java Street area, it's all over Hagerstown. So why don't you reach out then? We haven't reached out to any place, any quote, neighborhoods first or community in which we have identified a bladed property that needs to come down to the benefit of the community. Okay, the you, only, said, you said in 2008. Hang on, Ron, hang on, let, let Lou finish. In 2008, the decision was made to tear this down. We got finally the court order to do it. This is not the first property that's going down. The first property we just took down was on Summit, right? Yeah. We had no neighborhood's first meeting to notify people that we were taking down a bladed building. You have to understand that you know, when Senator Benson came, we've had, I've seen Senator Benson has been here in city council three times while I've been here. And you know why she's been here? Begging for us to tear down blighted buildings in the Jonathan Street area. That's what she came to city council for on three separate occasions, specifically addressing the building next to hers. The problem is... When I hear Reggie say we have completely ignored the infrastructure of Jonathan Street while we target a bladed building to take down, instead of saying, you know, there's some mistake, we're being blamed for it. While we're saying we, it's been the most ignored infrastructure in the city, it has also been the largest infrastructure project in the city of Hagerstown's history. So let's just keep that straight. We prop and that's the one year closure of the entire street to redig it. 2009, 2000. Put in entire lines, put in new sidewalks for everybody. How many CDBG properties have we purchased on Jonathan Street to put up for resale to try to get private ownership in there? I just reject the theory that the city of Hagerstown has ignored the Jonathan Street area. I would much prefer to say that the Jonathan Street area has ignored coming into us and saying this is the history that we need to save until we identify a bladed building. We're here now, though. And you, you're talking, and he has 15 minutes. We're here now. So the, the purpose of me being here today is to say that we in the community are in a different position than what we have been. We are closer to the resources of Annapolis than we have ever been. Lou, I reject what you are saying because you've been in this body for 25 years, and most of this has happened under your watch. Oh, I, will, I am happy to stand up and say what has happened in the Jonathan Street community during my watch for the last 25 years. I'm happy to do it any time you wish to, Reggie. I think we've already laid out what's happened under your watch. I, I, I'm not here today to win a pissing battle with you. I'm here to say that we have resources available to preserve this building as a start to preserving the broader Jonathan Street community. We have resources available for us to tell fully the story of those that inhabited and contributed to this community 
in a way that we have not told them before. There's a win for all of us. There's a win for the community. There's a win for preservation efforts. There is a win for, for the economics of tourism with us simply getting the dollars from Annapolis that never come to Western Maryland. We're in a period of time where Governor Hogan has made significant investment here. There is a focus on Western Maryland, and this is our opportunity to get those dollars. So instead of defending your record, I'm asking for you to partner with us because there is some blame to be accepted all the way around. And 25 years of service and that type of disrepair, and you not on the record for it, that's a problem. In 2000, and go back here a little bit, 2006, 2007, um, Wendy Perry was here and Commissioner then Del Green, of the, who's now the president of the Maryland Commission on African American History, um, did a tour of the Johnson Street area and identified a list of properties to be uh, viewed as worth memorializing and saving. They were the, most, um, the Bethel Street, um, on Bethel Street Masonic Temple, the old site of the Ebenezer AME Church, the Greater Camford Church, and Watson Funeral Home. On Jonathan Street, it was Asbury Methodist Church, Sportman's Club site, of, of, and, and the site of the Harmon Hotel. Jonathan Place, uh, Hester's, Elks Lodge, 2278, 335 The Chicken Coop, Progressive Men's Club, Calvary Temple Church, Old Barber Shop on the corner of North and Jonathan, and LaRue Salon, which was where Greater Camper Church originated from. Um, that was 2006, 2007. In 2008, and we'll go to Lou's uh, memory on this, uh, it, it was deemed to tear down 335 Jonathan. Okay, because it was already beginning to deteriorate and falling on itself. I have a question here. Uh, hang on, Ronnie. So, 10 years later, all right, 10 years, mind you, where a defunct LLC out of Frederick County walked away from the property, has not paid city or county taxes. There are over $33,000 owed to the city alone in city taxes, fines, and fees on a property that is now dangerous, dangerous, that could fall in to the street, could fall in on someone inside, could, could do any of those things. And I guarantee you right now, Orange Snow Fence is not keeping anybody out of that building that wants to get in it. So we need to know, are, are you ready to, you know, come to the city with monies and a plan to save 335 tonight? Because if not, we're going to abide by the court order. Okay. So obviously we know that this is a process. Even if the property was purchased through tax sale, we would still have to wait six months to get our hands on the property. At least six months. At right. least six months. So we're, we're looking into 2020 to, to getting our hands on the property. Um, we would like to acquire the property. We would like to bring funds to the table. We also would like to use all the state sources available that I, of letters of recommendation that I've given you. Um, Preservation Maryland has stepped forward and said that they would lend us their resources and possibly even their hands in regards to preservation efforts. However, we're in a holding pattern until we can acquire the building. So one question that we, we have is that with the same order that the city can go on the property and demolish it, can the city go on that property and stabilize it and secure it till we're able to obtain ownership? I don't have any I understand that you have budgetary requirements, but I'm looking at a blighted, neglected community of over 30 years. Let's look at the, the depressed property values of the inhabitants there, as opposed to their neighbors in the other historic districts. What have they lost in regards to transferring wealth to their families? African Americans are going to be of negative net worth by 2050. And these red line districts where property values have been depressed and then subsequently gentrified are a prime example of an issue that we're dealing with today. 
What I'm looking for is a partnership to think outside of how business has been done to improve your relationship with the African American community, utilize all these amazing people that are here standing for this project to rebuild the community. And it takes us doing things differently than what's been done before. Paul? Paul Falk, you out there. Can you uh, give us a little bit of idea of what that property currently, what kind of shape it's in? about this particular project. I represent a lot of groups, and one of the groups is the Joint Veterans Council of Washington County, and so I want to take this opportunity to thank all of you for all the support that you've given us for the Korean Monument on Potomac Street, and more recently, the uh, Vietnam Monument on Walnut Street. And many years ago, we were responsible for putting a plaque for a Medal of Honor recipient of Washington County, William Wilson. And we placed it on the triangle out there about 20-some years ago. And we had the family there, and we had the, the, joint, uh, the uh, Buffalo Soldiers Group from Baltimore there. They came up and put a, a placard out at the Rose Hill. Well, I want to again thank you for all of that. I am, for a little bit about me, I like this community. I was the in individual for integrating the schools in Washington County. I was principal of Woodland Way School. And today I had an opportunity to meet some of the former students of the school. We, uh, we integrated the school very successfully. And I worked with the principal there, Charlie Hodges, and uh, the various ministers in the community. And I have a strong affiliation with the community, as you well know. I'm a 93-year-old resident of Washington County. My family had a business in downtown Hagerstown, right next to the Maryland Theater. He had a confectionery store, and right on the square in Washington County. Very successful back in the 30s and the 40s, up until the end of the World War II. Uh, I am strongly supporting of this, this mission. I'm a history student. I taught history. And I even spent a couple years in Africa, in Nigeria, representing Washington County Board of Education. And again, uh, if you have any questions, I'd be glad to answer them. But uh, I do think this is a very fine project. And we, we are looking forward now. I got affiliated today by accident. I went to, to, on North Street, and I met this group. And I went there for one purpose. We want to put a plaque for William Wilson, the recipient of Medal of Honor at Martinsburg Park. We have two of them out there, a Wagner and a Will, two recipients of the Medal of Honor, and one placard space is missing. And we want to put the Wilson placard there. And we're going to create that. And again, our group is going to put a placard for Robert Johnson, a Tuskegee Airman, and a teacher in Washington County, out Martin Stook Park and perhaps in on Johnson Street or North North Avenue. And so that's why I, I got real close today. It was by accident, but I read the newspapers and I've been in Annapolis and Senator Benson and I were on the same committee. We were down there with Elijah Cummings. Elijah Cummings is a congressman now. He was our vice chairman. And she was very supportive of all of our activities in Washington County. I was chairman of the delegation, and all the legislation came in, came through my desk, and we had sometimes 20 to 30 bills to support, and Ms. Benson was very supportive of us. Now, I don't know if she's here today or not, but uh, no. I bet her everything in the, in the newspaper about her her support. Okay? Thank you very much. Keith, and you get to talk to another one, as you know, of your elementary school the students in Woodland Way. And I was proud to be a, uh, a player for Bob Johnson, and I was even prouder to be asked by the Johnson family to speak 
when the rec center was renamed after Bob Johnson. Um, it was an honor to do so. Thank you. Hmm? Thank you, there, Councilman. Uh, the Greg Klein family yeah. there, the whole family went to went to was one way. Many of the professional children were with them away. They lived mostly in the north end of Hagerstown, so we had the opportunity to meet the leaders in Washington County. And uh, I, we are going to put this placard for, uh, with your support, uh, Robert Johnson, uh, Veterans Day, November the 11th. But the 30th, we're we had the placard already made for Wilson, and we're ready to put it up on the 30th, which is Thursday. We support the, the legal, a national acceptable Memorial Day, which is the 30th, not the veteran, not the federal holiday, which is Saturday or Sunday or Monday, whichever the one you want. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, Pete. Mayor, Mayor do you know how much money you're doing for Washington County? I'm a 93 year old, Ronald 94 resident of Hagerstown. Okay. I was born right where CBS is, right in Cannon Avenue. Right where I get my medicine. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you, Pete. Blue. Hey, especially for Pete's edification, how much money do you know is in this year's budget for the Medal of Honor Triangle? Does anybody know? I, I don't Rodney may know. Seventy thousand. Seven. Okay. okay. Paul, you want to speak to the condition of three thirty-five? And then we got to move. Thank you, Pete. Thank, Thank you, Pete. It's good to see you again. The, the general condition of the property from the outside, it might not look like anything's really occurring to the property. Um, but unfortunately, I was in the property in 2008, saw the conditions of it, and then saw it again in 2018 when we did the warrant at the property. And it is slowly deteriorating. It's demolition by neglect. The roof is missing in sections. The second floor has collapsed into the first floor, and the first floor flooring has rotted and is starting to collapse on the inside. The counter that used to be in there for the commercial space has started to collapse into the crawl space area. The foundation is crumbling and no longer can support the outside wall, so it's slowly collapsing on its own. Is there any way to stabilize it? When we had the structural engineer evaluate the property, they recommended demolition. Uh, I just um, want to make for the record that each one of you have in your email inbox copies I love from the American already, Historical right? Trust of properties that were in much worse condition than this property that were preserved. So my ask is that we stop playing politics. Yeah. We're not playing and, politics. And, and let's right. protect this property. Give us an opportunity to rehab it. I'm willing to put my own dollars towards it. Yes. Councilman Al Shire. Because I believe that it's important. The community believes that is important. Just as much as you've talked to one person and they gave you one opinion, outside news media, Fox 5 comes to town and gives the exact same opinion that we gave to you last Tuesday. That too many of our buildings have disappeared. Too many. Well, I would suggest, and, and this, is, this is me, and uh, I, I brought this up, and if we'd have had the opportunity to meet prior to the meeting, or even tomorrow morning, like I offered for breakfast. Um, I, we, we have a list that was created in 06, 07, and I believe that we need to focus on those buildings that can be saved right now from any future dilapidation and, do, and, and make a list and focus on, okay, which ones, you know, where do they fall in priority? That's what I believe that our next step should be if we're truly going to save buildings in the, in the John of the Street area that, that are, are deemed savable. Professor Lynn Bowman from Allegheny County is working right now to identify all the buildings that are from that era that have significant history that are in danger. Preservation Maryland has already offer their resources. They will be here at the end of the month to meet with me to talk about a plan of being more proactive. I understand that this body believes that this was a last minute um, move by us to create attention and that was not the case. The fact is, is that a lot of the history of the African American community has been under 
appreciated, and reported. Professor Lynn Bowman from Allegheny County has connected more dots of the significance of our community to the, to the world in the past month than most historians have in this area in, in decades. So each day, for those of you that follow me on social media, we're sharing new revelations about our community that we did not know. We did not know that Madam C.J. Walker came in her touring car down Jonathan Street and hung a right on the Bethel to go, go see Jacob Wheaton. We didn't know that. We didn't know that the Moxley Band was performing in town as Frederick Douglass came here. We didn't know those things. So these efforts seem behind to you, but you're looking at it through your lens. You're not understanding how this history is suppressed and it's a jigsaw puzzle to piece it together and find it and to connect people to families, to buildings to what was happening. The Jonathan Street community is desolate. It was a thriving community. There were businesses there. There's nothing there. So we're here to stop that process and to start a community-wide effort to preserve it. And we're looking for partnership. I understand you can have one structural engineer and we can bring in another and we can have a different opinion. I understand how that goes. I'm just asking for the will of the city to work with us and to explore, can they stabilize the building until we can acquire it? So you come in and you accuse us of playing politics while at the same time you, you reach out and say we want to work with you. Will you explain how we are playing politics? Yes. At the meeting last week, when we're talking about our individual community needs, you brought up the current president. He has nothing to do with these issues. I didn't bring up the current president. I brought I brought up, well, you want to let me repeat what I brought up? I brought up, if we don't it's make it. It's not important. It is important. No, it's not important to these issues here. I have before, my friend. If I brought up the fact that if we don't make a change in 2020, the racism in this country is going to go absolutely rampant. I never mentioned our president's name because our president isn't the problem. The people, the people who are believers in the hate that is spewed from there, if it is not stopped, it is getting worse. I tried to respond to the accusation that there is racism in Hagerstown and agreed. And then get, and then get, hey, I'm playing politics because I agree there's racism in Hagerstown and I agree that there's racism in the United States. And last time I went down to the Jonathan Street area in politics, you know what I said? I don't know why anybody believe what a white person says down here. Okay? So I understand all that. And, well, it is about me. It's really not about oh, you. Oh, it's about me. Uh, whoa, 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 whoa. Listen, listen, we're, we're, listen, really listen, right. we're, we're okay. The right. world is watching. It's, it's really not. It's and not. It's we not. are going to make, and first. And accuse us of essentially being racist, it becomes about us. All right, first off, Cap, yeah, yeah, hang on. Hang on, please. Amen. We're going to go, I, I understand. Shall I anything from you? Emily. Yeah, no, I don't think we have solved this issue yeah. yet. No, we haven't. That's why I'm giving you the floor. Oh, I don't. Oh, okay. What are, I mean, what are we deciding? <laughs> well, we're, we're, <laughs> well I, I, do you have anything to add to this conversation is what I was trying to get to. I mean, Lou, well, um, yeah, that don't statement, worry. you. I, I have something I'd like to add to this conversation. I appreciate your efforts, I, and I appreciate you bringing these issues to light. So now, how do we partner? I understand the past, so how do we partner for the future? That, well, that's all I'm, I'm asking, and I, I don't know how you want us to do that. I don't think there's anyone up here that's not willing to partner and help fix this. There's a problem. We recognize that you brought it to light. We appreciate that. So what do we do from today forward? Regarding this property, but regarding all the other ones as well, because I know Mr. Bachmiller has a list of, of some pretty significant historic properties as well. So how do we make sure we're not having the same conversation with those properties 10 years from now? Well, we can, we can form a coalition, a community coalition along with city government, um, along with the Commission of African American History and Culture that brings tremendous resources to the table. I know the Professor Lynn Bowman is lending herself to this effort. Matter of fact, she is planning a, a who is also a commissioner. Mm -hmm. She is lending herself to, she has reconstructed the Jonathan Street community back to 1903-04. She is going to be doing 
um, a walk here in June that will be announced shortly, June 15th, that, that will talk about the vibrancy and what the community's makeup was then. So there needs to be a community coalition that partners with you for us to identify all the places. I believe there also needs to be partnership to work through the five things in regards to the preservation study that have not been attacked. I, I would ask that the city... Well, there's be, one on there right now that we're working through. Right, you know that, right? Right, right. But, right. but there's five or six that have not been touched. Okay? Um, I, I am asking the city that they scour for grants through... Um, through Maryland grant programs and wherever that they can to, to help these efforts as well. Um, I, I understand that the Jonathan Street community is a part of the Opportunity Zone. Is that correct? Yes, So yes. Th th there's, there's a lot of ways that we can partner. There's a lot of ways that we can encourage minority investment here and bring business back. Jonathan Street community is a food desert. 335 was a storefront since the 1890s. We don't have to recreate the wheel. We don't have to just dump low-income housing in the Jonathan Street community. We can bring it back to its vibrance by encouraging business to come there because you're going to commit to the investment and partnership the same way that you do in City Center. Kristen, anything from you? Or Emily, were you done? I, I mean, you. I'm fine with the coalition idea, I, which is what we've recommended right. prior. So. Kristen. I mean, just a couple of comments. You know, I know it's, it's often mm, convenient to place public officials, especially uh, uh, ones that you don't have significant lines of communication with on a regular basis, uh, in, in sort of nice, neat little boxes uh, based on the sound bites that you might read or, or, or hear or, or, or get, you know, some, some knowledge of. And, and I, I, I try to refrain from uh, being placed uh, uh, in any of those, and, and I think that was part of the mood that I attempted to strike the other evening uh, and tried to explain uh, to a certain degree as it applies to efforts toward this very simple measure, which is we have heard um, for so long uh, from all parts of our community of uh, the issue associated with vacant and blighted and neglected properties. Abandoned. And, and, and some years ago, um, I made a decision that Attempting to take our resources, our limited collective resources, and try and save those properties that are the uh, that are in the least capable condition uh, across this city uh, has for so long exhausted time, energy, and financial resources to the degree that that's all we seem to get done doing. I didn't have an interest in that uh, any longer. My interest uh, instead was clearly to look into each of these blocks uh, in the city in its entirety and say, what is good about those blocks? What is functioning? Uh, uh, what is an anchor? What is a catalyst? What can we save and what do we need to remove before we don't have the ability to save those that are in flux in those blocks uh, that, that uh, could uh, lead to further deterioration. And so, you know, Lou mentions the, 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 the Summit Avenue property, which is the first one we, wanted, did, we did through uh, what I'll call legal process. Um, you know, and the first comment from the neighbor in the paper there uh, was, I've been living here 20 years and I've been staring at that property for 20 years and this is what it looked like for 20 years and I'm so glad uh, that it's gone and that, that, that's a citizen of the city making that comment reflective of the comments that we get on an increasing uh, level. And I provided uh, a, a visual of uh, about a 12-page report that staff did of thousands of properties across this city uh, that meet those metrics. Um, and I cited the fact that, you know, we had a group of folks in 
when we decided to take down the two properties that I believe were associated with the Bester family at some point behind the library and uh, uh, the dirty motel uh, that everybody, I'm sure, uh, uh, with the history of, of the community remembers. Uh, and uh, 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 the uh, Antietam paper, I guess it was, uh, and any number of these properties, the Delta Hosiery that just came down a, a few weeks back, and not all of them are, are at the direct hand of the city uh, or at the direct hand of the property owner, but all of them are recognizably deterrents to uh, having uh, a successful and vibrant remaining uh, a component of the city. And I never ask, never ask one time, not one time, you know, what specific street is that on? What specific segment of the population does that affect? Uh, what is the entire history uh, that that building has to tell? I don't because like uh, uh, thousands of other residents that live in this city that tell us on an increasingly uh, uh, common basis, you need to remove that blight. And the only question I would have as it applies to this property, which I am still in favor of demolishing two days from now, the 9th, correct? I haven't changed my position on that no differently than I've changed my position on all of those other properties that I could sit here and cite on all of those other streets. I haven't changed my position on any of those. So when you say to us, uh, we're looking at six months, we're looking at the possibility of grants, I said this uh, a week ago, I don't want another almshouse uh, on our hands that the mayor so, so, so uh, often reminds us of. So I know that it's six months to get to that, that, that property sale, that tax lien, but I believe if I read staff's email correctly, then there is, a, there, there is the possibility of another two-year process in which that defunct owner can come back and say, thank you very much for holding uh, uh, the, the costs on my property. I will pay you and take that back now. And, and, and I don't know, uh, uh, number one, that, that, that the community uh, that, 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 that lived there uh, on that particular street any differently than any of these properties on any other street, uh, think that two and a half more years of watching a property uh, decline uh, is an appropriate action uh, by the body, any more than the gentleman on Summit Avenue would think that another two and a half years of watching that particular property decline uh, would be an appropriate action of this body. And so that, that I think, is, is, is as simple as, as I see it. And, and as I said last week, I don't believe that a structure uh, uh, needs to exist to tell the importance of individuals that have made their mark on this community. I don't believe that. And that is a disconnect that you have with the community. I have two questions in reference to that question. Sure. All right. Did that fall on her sea safe? In addition to that, if it didn't fall on her sea safe, how come the city hasn't tried to partnership, as Reggie says, to bring the property up to snuff? I mean, you already have a list of property, as you just indicated. Correct. So how come the public isn't aware of the properties on Jonathan Street that you're getting ready to dispose of? like the uh, uh, Masonic Temple on Bethel Street that I talked to Mr. Bachman about three years ago to try to get into it so that we could physically try to structure it so that the roof doesn't cave in. I'm just asking questions. Yeah, I, have no, I have no issue with, with partnering in a process to do that. With a property owner. We're having a discussion uh, about a That's property that has been in a defunct condition for 11 years without any discussion to that effect. Uh, that only now, I mean, I, and I said this last week, I mean, I feel like folks are conveying this message that I simply woke up yesterday and said, you know what I'm going to do today? I'm going to tear down this property. No, you the still didn't answer my question. And, I said, did it fall into the case. category of C-safe when you talked about 2008 when Carolyn Brooks was involved? That's what I'm asking you. That's when all this stuff allegedly was transpiring to do this and do that, but mm -hmm. the public was never aware of that, is what I'm telling you. Never. Was you under the regime then to where this decision was made. I know Lewis was. Well, well, I mean, I wasn't on the council in 2008. Thank you. I was a commissioner. So, so I can appreciate your statements and your concern because I understand you have a job to do. And so no one's knocking that. And I, and I understand we just didn't wake up and realize that there was an issue. I think one of the problems is we just woke up and realized what we had. We just found the treasure. And that's the concern that we have on this end. And when the gentleman spoke, Mr. Callis spoke when I met him earlier, the amazing thing about it is that he's talking about Tuskegee Airmen and Buffalo Soldiers. 
being here in Hagerstown. Tuskegee Airmen and Buffalo soldiers talked about all around the world. And we have parts of those histories here in our country. At one point in time, they were diminished in my mood and no one talked about them. But when those things come to light, we try to shine a light on them. It's really bigger than our community. And you have an opportunity right now, in this moment, sir, to speak beyond just you and beyond just mm -hmm. us. And that's what I believe Reggie just simply asking that we pause for a moment, which is a word that I got from Tahitian, that we simply all just pause for a moment and realize what we're dealing with here. Let's don't be so haughty and, you know, a man's ego is about this big in the reality, but it's the easiest thing that's bruised is a man's ego. And once a man's ego is bruised, he'll choose to take a side on what he wants to do and he won't move from it. I'm simply saying, let's just stop and pause for a moment. I, enjoy, I, I appreciate the fact that you asked the question, Emily, what can we do? We keep talking about what I want to do and what I want to do. And I think Emily brings up a good point. What can we do? What can we do about this opportunity that we have to save some history that's bigger than just Hagerstown, but happens to be, to be born in Hagerstown? Imagine the people that will come from all across the world all across the United States, maybe just to hear about a Tuskegee Airman and then find out about the Moxley Band. We have a unique opportunity right now, gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, if we just take a moment and pause and breathe and talk about what's really important. Austin, what about you? Anything? Uh, yeah, I'd just like to say, uh, Reggie, I think I've, I've complimented you several times on social media and, and the other night. I think the action you've undertaken to do the historical research and to start this process, I think is a very positive catalyst for the city. And I think there, there's a community that didn't know a her their heritage. There's a, there's a lot of people that had no idea that that building that's falling in was ever anything other than a building that was falling in. Um, I, I support fully what Emily was saying that the, uh, let's, let's get together, let's put a coalition together, let's decide how to preserve this history, let's preserve, and, and now that we've, we've got some recognition in the community, in, in the Jonathan Street community, that we have something here. And yeah, yeah, there's a, you know, what was torn down for Bethel Gardens, you'll never see that again, but it's gone, and we can't do anything about that. The thing that concerns me right now, I, I know Steve Bachmiller has done some research on some buildings also, which I think can be incorporated in this, and some that have some, some very significant historic um, possibilities for restoration. The thing that concerns me about this specific building right now is just from, a, from the city's standpoint, if, if a child goes in that building, or if teenagers go in that building, and, and as I think the mayor said, that, that snow fence isn't going to stop anybody who wants to go in there and explore. And now that it's become, it, it's on the newspaper, it's on the, it's on WDVM, it's, you know, people are talking about it, I think people are going to want to see what's in there. And I, I know one of the engineers that went in, when he first went in, he fell through the floor, up to his knee, I think. Um, I, I'm concerned what happens if somebody gets hurt in that building? Now, now that we know, you know, we've all we've done studies. We know that this building is dilapidated, and it, it, it is a safety hazard. Maybe we've let it go too long. Um, it, it's it's like a it's like a cancer. You know, you you, you ignore it, you don't treat it, and you let it. All right, so anyway, I believe I'm, 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 I'm saying that the, the, the letting the building letting the building's disease fester without treating it has has done it in and and you know possibly if we had started 10 years ago or the other thing is you know we, we've got to look as a community the Jonathan Street community was raped that was raped by by slumlords who came in, these LLCs that came in from, from out of the city and bought up low, low price properties with some kind of a scheme of doing something, which was probably not good, and, and, and then decided, well, it, it really is going to cost too much to retrofit this thing, and they just let it sit. 
and they hid behind their LLC, and they didn't pay the taxes, and they didn't try to develop it, they didn't try to build it back up, they didn't do anything, and they just ran away. And they're still, the, the, we know the gentleman's name down in Frederick, who was the managing member, and, you know, he's still there, he, no skin off of his back. Uh, no skin off his back right now if some child walks in that building and falls through the floor. I can appreciate what you're saying about the LLC. I, 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 I'm on second, Reg. Right. Go ahead, Luke. This is the last thing I'll say. Two things. When I go to mediation, I say to people all the time when we do our divorce mediations, the best way that we can mess this mediation up entirely is talking about yesterday because if you all start talking about yesterday, you're going to just get into a pissing match and we'll never get on until tomorrow. I think we talked a little bit too much about yesterday is my problem tonight. I will say, this is my attitude. I may be the only one who has this attitude. Yeah. But we have a, uh, a whole lot of buildings on that list to be demolished. Let's take the funding on this building and demolish another building. Put a fence around this building. I have no doubt whatsoever what the outcome of this building will be a year or two years from now. I have little doubt in my mind. But this is not the only bladed building in this town. I, for one, would have no problem voting not to take it down, put up a fence, and let Reggie do his thing and come back to us in a year or two and tell us where we're at with the building. Uh, the city does not have the funds to stabilize it. That's not going to happen. But I could certainly see putting a fence up around it. So we're going to block a sidewalk for two years. We're going to do that, that seems to be what this community wants, is what I'm being told. We have other places you missed like, like, uh, you missed it. You missed it. please, please, no more. Page. Okay, we're, we're 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 going to move on. We have to. Okay, so hang on a second. So again, I'll say, are we going to block a sidewalk for two years plus? Because it's going to be more than two. We know that it's going to be six months after the tax sale plus whatever. Are we going to do that? Are we going to hope that that building doesn't fall out into Jonathan Street and hit someone? Are we going to do that? I thought that's what we were being asked to do, but now I'm being told that's if not. I, I would like to hear if you go down and speak to the elders on Jonathan Street, they actually keep the, keep the people safe right there. Yeah. If you go down there and talk to them, because Fox 5 went down and talked to the, to the people on Jonathan Street. If you go and talk to, to the people that sit outside right there, they'll tell you how they keep the community safe and how they're tired of the city tearing down their history. Thank you, Takesha. Thank you. That's, that's mm -hmm. what we're getting down can, to. You had um, said that other buildings have been in worse shape that yes. were struck, that were able to be, um, I guess, stabilized. Yes. So I saw some pretty nasty ones in that presentation that you sent me. <laughs> I'm sorry? Because I saw some pretty nasty ones in the presentation. If, that you, so said. you check your email, you'll, you'll be able to see the So page. my question is, do you know if that process, have they evaluated this particular property, or do you know, like, what it would take if these other ones were in worse condition? We, we have not had a structural engineer in, in there yet. Um, there's a structural engineer that is working in Allegheny County on Henry Louis Gates' family property that we have made contact with to see if we can get another opinion in regards to that. But the difficulty is, is that we have no access to the property to do anything um, from that standpoint. But we are still working our resources to be ready. And the only thing that I would like since that, I would like Lou to be on the record to tell us what he believes the outcome is going to be in two years so that we can revisit his words. I would think the outcome in two years would be one of two things. Either the property is going to start having serious restoration or it's going to be torn down. But in two years, one of those two things is going to happen to it. Okay. All right, so thank you guys. Reggie, thank you. I'll tell you what we're going to do. Uh, we're going to stay in contact, and we want to make sure that uh, uh, you're part of whatever coalition uh, that we can put together through the community and, and elected bodies and staff people, uh, again, to, to pinpoint some of these properties. That and can I just mention one other thing on the list? We need to have a viable solution to preserve 417 North Jonathan Street. In your, in your 2002 preservation study, 
that is deemed the oldest building in the Jonathan Street community. Most of you know that it's a log ca cabin home under the siding. That home was the headquarters of the Colored Laboring Sons and Daughters Beneficial Society of Hagerstown in the late 1800s. Jacob Whedon was one of the founding members of that. That is very important to us. Is that Mr. Davis' property? Yes. You know, he wants it torn down, right? No. Yeah. Well, he's paying, actually, he's paying for the demolition of that building. We'll, we, will, we will work with. Okay, you work with Mr. Davis. And my suggestion is you reach out to the defunct LLC guy in Frederick County and work with him. And maybe you can figure out some kind of a plan. But, but if the LLC is defunct, there's nothing that one individual member can say on behalf of a defunct LLC. Well, someone owns that property. Yes, and a defunct LLC, not the individual members. Rich, you had mentioned at one point in our conversations that there were stabilization funding from yes. the state of Maryland. Yes. So is it, would that funding be available to stabilize this property for this they're amount well, of time? There, there, there possibly could be emergency funds that can be gathered. We, we lost a little bit of steam, so the funds that um, MHT had, I'm not sure, are still available. Due to a fiscal year or due to just timing of? Just doing the, what was left in the coffers for the fiscal year. Okay. Okay. So when could we, when could someone, you, I would imagine, look towards getting that stabilization Well, the, the trick of that is, is that if we don't have ownership of the property, those funds would not be released yeah. for okay. us to do that for a property that we or you don't own. Right. right. Yeah. So we're back to... Six months before, well, well we're, we're back to tax sale time, and then six months, and then. But but if we but if we listen to what Councilman Hefferman said, that the community has been raped, and he talked about the defunct LLC. Mm -hmm. But what we're not mentioning is the history of redlining of that community, mm -hmm. which originally depressed the property values, the disinvestment in that community, the filtering of the drugs to that community that everyone outside of the community went there for. It. Those type of things have shaped that community to be where it is. What we're asking for is, is a partnership. And this is a start. This is a start to rehabbing the entire community. But we have to lay a marker down somewhere, and we've decided to lay it here. And why did we do that? Because the Moxley Band formed here in 1854. The three Moxley brothers, two were enslaved and one was free. They went and fought for us. They joined the U.S. Colored Troops. They performed in Maryland. They performed in Virginia. They performed in Texas. And in 1866, they came home and were the pride of this community. And in 1879, they performed when Frederick Douglass came through here. And they continued to serve the community. And as they started to pass away, Edgar Moxley was born in 1878, the son of Robert, the head of the band. He continued the band his entire life until he passed away in 1953. Edgar lived at 335 North Jonathan Street from 1946 to 1953. The back of the house on the first floor was the band room. The family retrieved drums and cornets. We we're in the process of talking with museums to see the value and the fact that they very well could be nationally displayed. The city of Hagerstown has funded efforts to highlight the Moxley Band, but can't fully tell its story. The Jonathan Street community can. So what we're asking for is a partnership to go outside how you normally do business, to go against the naysayers, and give us an opportunity because we're in a different place in the last 50 years. You know years. I love going against the naysayers. <laughs> well, this is your opportunity. Because you're going to have to answer to your, your friends on social media. I don't have any friends on social media, trust me. That's true. He will, he will. This is an investment that you're making. But the, but the potential payoff is tremendous, right? Because two, three years from now, if this fails, you can blame Reggie Turner and, and, and you can make me the face of this failure, right? You can, you can be done with me because of that. However... If you make this bet and you win, then the community wins. And the rest of this rich history that we are uncovering is going to be told. And more tourism is going to be here as a result of that. 
and you're sitting in a seat that has a chance to affect that change and do something different. And I ask you to do that. Thank you, Richard. Thank you. All right. Thank you, guys. You're on. We're gonna, I don't know. Are we gonna we're gonna move forward on demolition or not? I mean, we got to. I don't, we have to make I a mean, decision. That's the point of being in the middle of this conversation. And now all those folks that came here for that decision are leaving the room. Well, I was trying to get a decision. <laughs> we, can we can call them and send them back. I'm not sure. I don't know what. I mean, I there's know five people happened. sitting here yeah. that have five different opinions. Tell them to come on back. I mean, I still don't know how it's going to be stable. I think that's the whole thing. I, I, think, I, I think if we have to do what Bruce says, it has to have a fence around it. A fence, it. fence. We have to prevent anyone from getting anywhere near that building. So if you've got three to do that, you should do that. I mean, there's other properties that we could concentrate on while we have this property to be able to, you know, do exactly what Reggie's saying, to figure out what the partnership looks like. I mean, we can't just say, like, we're going to create a partnership. We all agree there should be a partnership. There should be a coalition, right? But at the same time, we have to be able to stabilize it. We have a list of other properties that would that we could demolish. So why can't we just move forward with the other ones and figure out what that partnership looks like? You could. There's one on my street. Huh? There's one on my street. Yeah. <laughs> you could. You, that's what you want to do. I mean, I don't know. I'm just. I'm worried about the safety part. I don't think it's going to be a matter of locking that sidewalk off for two years because I think they'll be able to come. I do too. To a realistic appraisal of what to do with it. Thank you. Within a couple of months. That's what I think. We're sorry. We just don't feel like that there was a conclusion there. Okay. I don't <laughs> think anybody said to to the folks in the room what we actually. Are going to do from this point forward. Right. I think you heard five members of council sort of express five varying opinions, and the objective that I like to leave these discussions with, or at least you having some awareness of what the consensus is uh, uh, from this point forward, not you leaving the room, then we reach a consensus, and two days later the building's demolished. You know what I mean? And and <clears throat> you not have uh, uh, that 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 clarity, or the building's right. fenced. And you don't have that clarity yet. And yeah. so, I mean, I, yeah, I, I think right now we have two people who are willing to say, let's secure the building and, and give these folks. I, I use the word two years, Reggie, because I think in two years, I do and, believe there's going to be a solution. But I think the reasonable solution will take far less than that, because I think it will be far less time than that to figure out what can or should be done. And I think you need to define for the folks in the room what secure the building means. Fence. Like a more sturdy, is there a more sturdy option than that fence? Once the structural engineer looks at it, there may need to be some frame. If it's in danger of falling on Jonathan Street, well, if that's the case, then we may just have to take it down. I mean, if it's literally can't be stabilized for for under a couple hundred thousand dollars. I think Reggie would agree that's a different conversation. If it can't be stable, because you want to get a structural engineer too, correct? I mean, I'm pretty sure. That additional structural engineer says we can't do it. That's another I conversation. Think, but they need access. They need city assistance to get access into the building. We can coordinate that. Paul, how do you feel about that? Having we got an administrative search warrant, and I would defer to Jen on some Jen. lines. About access to the structure, non-city personnel. Uh, under the auspices of city right. personnel, not just Correct. going in. Not just I going think you in. tell somebody you're going to pay their thirty-three grand, and they'll let you walk right in the front door. That's just there. <laughs> <laughs> I could be wrong. That community's owed more than thirty-three grand, oh, so I, I don't really take the jokes. I'm not here for that. Right. I mean, you know, you got, how I feel. You got a majority yeah. of folks that have an okay. interest in this. Let's defer to council, John. Having a structural engineer come in. A structural engineer, yeah. a construction crew. Well, a structural engineer come in and look at the building first. You right. say whether oh, whether it can be stabilized. Opinion? Yeah. Reg, with yeah. Reggie's direction, for your structural engineer. Your structural engineer. Yeah, but under but under the direction. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I think yeah. we can handle yeah. that with an administrative warrant. Yeah. 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 Especially structural engineer that's done these projects. Mm -hmm. and, that, and that would be your choice. That'd be Reggie. That'd be Reggie's, Reggie's would, decision. No. Would that make you feel? Would that make you feel comfortable, Reggie? To, That's a start. Okay. And again, I just All think right. that there is a list of other properties that we can 
you know, this is a very important project and a very important property and listen, to this, this community. Is not, and not the first building that was a danger to our community that was left unsecured for way too long. I can think of one with a four-letter name, starting with an M and ending with a P, with an E and L in between it. <laughs> Where we finally secured that building. So that would that would give them. So the consensus is to secure the building with a fence. Well, that's you have two people. That's okay. I have, okay. There's three. Austin. Okay. So yeah. yeah. All right. Okay. And we'll secure the building with a fence that's more sturdy. That actually deters people from trying to get on into the property. And then we'll wait for Reggie to uh, let us know when his structural engineer is available and then we'll work it out to be able to get into the building with that structural engineer and then get a report from him and then go from there. And Is do, that what we want to do? That's well, and I would think that I'd like to add that due to the deterioration of the property and the danger that time is of the essence. I've already so, been in contact with all okay. hands on deck. Right. Just keep us posted. And I'll when, be making phone calls tonight as soon as I leave you. Okay. Thank you. I feel like right, this is more go. of a conclusion. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for yeah. back in. All right. Strategy for sale of city owned property, 117 South Local Street. Let's get this out of the way. Don't yeah. make your grass, man. Yeah. So we still uh, have a property uh, now owned under our city ownership at 117 South Locust Street. Uh, in late 2018, the mayor and city council authorized uh